Good shot. Meaningful. What happened to this Russian howitzer D20 that I showed in more detail in one of my previous videos? Did the barrel rupture due to reaching the end of its lifespan 40 years ago? Or did a non-functional projectile explode inside the barrel, which Russia still supplies to the conflict zone despite the risks? In fact, barrel bursts are now no less a cause of Russian artillery being taken out of action than the AFU's anti-battery warfare. And all because of the wear and tear and unserviceability of the ammunition. But the enemy can do nothing about it, because the production of shells is slow. Production of new artillery is in complete stasis, especially when it comes to smelting barrels. Withdrawal of D-20, D-30 artillery from storage and other nomenclature started in Russia back in the spring of 2022. In just the past month, the armed forces of Ukraine destroyed 290 pieces of Russian artillery. The military-industrial complex of the occupiers is not capable of producing even 10% of this amount of destroyed artillery per month, but it can ensure the unstorage. Starting from the spring of 2022, relatively usable howitzers and self-propelled artillery were taken out of storage. And now, more and more of those that are unsuitable for use are appearing on the battlefield. The situation with ammunition is similar. Those rounds, which were tried not to be removed from storage in the summer and fall of 2022 because of their condition, are now the main replenishment of the unit's ammunition. Thus, the concentration of substandard artillery and ammunition with the enemy is only growing. Yes, a howitzer, even with a spent barrel, can shoot, but it should be understood that its gun becomes unpredictable. In addition, to put excessive loads on it is to increase the percentage of unpredictability. About the shells it's a hell of a lottery. That's the Russian roulette with two rounds in the drum. Before I continue, I ask you to subscribe to my channel, it will help to promote it. In March 2023, Russian troops suffered 221 tank losses, the November 2022 level. On March 23rd, Dmitry Medvedev announced that Russia planned to produce 1,500 tanks in 2023, or 125 tanks per month. Two days later he had already announced that Russia would produce 1,600 new tanks, but within three years, that is 44 tanks per month. Until February 24, 2022, the Russian military industrial complex transferred 160 to 300 not new, but upgraded old, tanks per year to the Russian army. That is 13 to 25 per month. Again, not new, but old, to conservation or already in service, upgraded tanks. But that's not the point. The point is that the AFU destroyed at least 116 Russian tanks per month during the full-scale invasion. In turn, taking into account the rate of destruction of tanks over the past five months, the average monthly figure is 180 units. Of course, with the intensification of hostilities, this figure will increase. After all, the average loss of Russian tanks in a year of war is 280 tanks per month. I mean whatever claims they make, they can't solve the loss problem even at the level of fantasies. Currently, the Russian military industrial complex is not producing, but restoring those tanks that can be restored with minimal time and cost to bring them to combat readiness. And when they run out? Oh well, maybe then the famous T-14 Armata will finally come into play.